For more on China's bike sharing boom, forget the stock market bubble. This is China's incredible bike share bubble. Plenty of people have complained about the new yellow O bikes being abandoned on Melbourne footpath. Bikes are affected because of uh, these incidents in terms of vandalism, uh, but we are confident that we can change that. O bike plague has been declared an environmental issue with the EPA stepping in. The Singapore based operator will be fined $3,000 if O bikes blocking footpaths aren't removed within two hours. The company's been notoriously difficult to contact and didn't respond to Seven News requests for comment. Early you've seen them, the bright yellow bikes taking over valley streets. Dockless bike sharing is the latest trend in transportation. China's capital Beijing was once called the Kingdom of Bicycles. During the 1970s and 80s, bicycles were used by Chinese residents as the most common means of transport. Bicycles were not only stylish but also affordable that could take you from anywhere, anytime for free. It was the middle and working class around the globe that truly made bicycle their own. On one hand, we had the elite class relying on their horse carriages and cars to travel. On the other hand, the working class were relying on bicycles for their daily wages and for their mobility. In 1986, about 63% of people paddled in the streets of Beijing. The number fell to 11% in 2015 thanks to China's growing economy, which meant people moved from bicycles to cars and streets got busier and congested. This rise and fall of bicycles can be seen in other countries such as India, America and many other European countries. Shared bicycles are the new trend in many countries and they offer solution to traffic jams and anxiety over public transportation due to COVID-19. But how did history repeat itself and people moved back from cars to bicycles again? Beijing had kicked off an ambitious plan to put 50,000 brand new cycles for rent ahead of 2008 Olympic Games to curb pollution and ease congestion. These bicycles were made available close to subway station, commercial districts, Olympic venues, hotels and office buildings. This program carried out by Bicycle Rental Service had a simple business model. Rent a bicycle to users and build docks to park cycle at public places, charge fees from users and pay commission to other stakeholders in the business model. Users were paying using payment cards and uh, parked their bicycles in the docks. Although this program folded after a couple of years down the line, but this concept gave rise to startups like Ofo, Mobike and several other companies. These startups removed inconvenience caused by payment cards and docks, which forced users to park bicycles in docks and make payments only using payment cards. Hence, they relied on a model of dockless bicycle parking system and used smartphone payments that gave users much greater flexibility and access to bicycles. These startups focused on solving the issue of micro-mobility and positioned themselves as last-mile transportation service providers. By 2016, China was home to 7 out of every 10 shared bicycles worldwide and growth in customers and earnings seemed staggering. In 2017 alone, the bicycle sharing industry's revenue jumped 10 times, from $181 million to $1.52 billion. In same years, users grew from 28 million to 209 million. By the end of 2017, China had nearly 77 bicycle sharing companies competing against each other. 
In 2017, Ofo and Mobike had jointly raised almost $2 billion with each valued at around $3 billion and had backing of tech giants like Alibaba and Tencent. Foreign investors got into the game as well, backing at least 8 other local startups. On one end, companies that were backed by investors tried to capture the market by price point and on the other end started to flood the market with their bicycles. They had a simple strategy, more the bicycles in the streets at the lowest price point attracts more customers. For consumers, this had its advantage. Competition kept fares artificially low with frequent discounts and plenty of bicycles scattered across cities. But for officials, the bikes were a management nightmare clogging sidewalks and inconveniencing pedestrians. The entire concept of bicycle sharing had lost its meaning. Users misused the system and companies in order to capture the market share flooded market with bicycles and relied on manufacturing these bicycles than focusing on reusing and maintaining the fleet. The bike sharing bubble burst about as quickly as it inflated, much like what transpired in the ride sharing battle between Uber and Ola. Bike sharing startups waged a bitter subsidy war to win market share and crush rivals by taking enormous losses on heavily discounted user fees. As a result, many firms went bust. User growth had also seen a tremendous fall. Take Mobike for an example. The healthiest of bike sharing startups, its monthly users exploded from 5 million to 38 million in 2017 but had since fallen to 20 million. The bicycle sharing industry will now consolidate and likely creating an oligopoly market around Mobike, Ofo and Hellobike. In 2017, China's Ministry of Transportation jointly with 10 other departments issued new rules requiring regulating bicycle parking, standardized service and guaranteeing the safety of users deposit. The bicycle rental industry underwent a sudden contraction with tens of millions of bikes removed from cities and companies paying hefty fines. This has forced firms to redesign their vehicle management and dispatching techniques. The entire concept of bicycle sharing transportation was to reduce pollution, traffic congestion and provide convenience to users to have a smooth last mile ride. Sadly, excess competition, huge influx of fund and no proper regulated systems have killed the meaning of it. The battle between startups is intense. Companies are burning money at the same time trying to figure out the market to build a sustainable business around the bicycle sharing concept. Everything seems great from investor's point of view, but not from an environmentalist's point of view. If you have liked this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon in order to never miss an update. My next video is on Yulu, a Bengaluru based startup that is trying to solve the same last mile issue in India, but in a more regulated manner. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more of these type of videos, Subscribe to the channel, I'll see you in the next one.